And I'm joined today by Doris Potash, who is one of our wonderful master docents here at the Asheville Art Museum. Launched in 2010, Slow Art, Slow Art Day is a global event with a simple mission, help more people discover for themselves the joy of looking at and loving art. The idea is when people look slowly at an artwork, they make discoveries. One day each year, today, April 4th, 2020, people all over the world visit local museums and galleries to look at art slowly. This year, of course, museums and galleries are making adjustments to their events in response to social distancing guidelines around the world. Regardless of where the events are taking place, in person, online, or at home, participants look at one or a few artworks and talk about their experience. That's it. Simple by design, the goal is to focus on the art and the art of seeing. For this year's event, Doris will lead us in an in-depth conversation about three artworks in our collection made by women in honor of the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment. We'll spend about 15 minutes or so with each artwork. Doris will allow us time to look at each work on our own, slowly, before leading a conversation about each one with questions. As participants, we encourage you to engage in dialogue with Doris, myself, and each other throughout the hour. Here, there are a couple ground rules for Slow Art Day 2020. Um, as you've been joining in, you've probably noticed that your microphones and video were muted by default. Um, some of you have already taken uh, the opportunity to unmute your video and hi, I can see Darlene and Morty and Carol, and you're welcome to unmute your video if you would like at this, at this time. Some tips on participating via Zoom. I, I think that probably a lot of you have um, been doing Zoom for the past couple of weeks who would have known three weeks ago that Zoom would become a part of our lives and it's been verbified now, we're Zooming. Um, choose a quiet room and close the door. Um, to, to have the best sound quality, we do recommend using headphones and a microphone. While you can log on um, via a smartphone, we do uh, find that using a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet allows you to see slides and meeting tools on a larger screen. And make sure that your meeting, or sorry, your screen name includes your first name um, and either your last name or last initial. And I can see that most of you have done that. As we're going through the conversation uh, in particular, it helps if Doris can call on EV or Lisa rather than iPhone 828-635-1562. Um, you know what I'm saying. To ask questions or to make comments, um, there will come a time uh, very shortly when I'm going to allow everyone to unmute your microphone at will. Doris, as I mentioned, will be asking a number of questions and comments. Um, so you can either un unmute your microphone to um, respond to her questions or to make comments. You can always uh, type your questions in the chat box or um, in the participant, uh, manage participant bar, you can raise your hand and I can call on you and unmute your microphone. As I mentioned in my email yesterday, we are recording this session for folks that weren't able to log on live. So if you prefer not to be recorded, I would say to make sure that your video and audio remain muted and to use the chat box to submit any questions or comments that you might have. I'm now going to give you all the opportunity to unmute yourselves at will. So at this time, does anybody have any questions or comments before we get started? Fantastic. Can everyone see my screen? Great. All right, Doris, I am going to turn it over to you. Doris? Can everyone hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll repeat it just in case. Apparently, I thought I was unmuting myself and must have muted myself. Um, so I want to welcome everyone to Slow Art Day, and I'm very excited about doing uh, my first virtual tour via Zoom. 
Um, as Christy said, we're going to be looking at three artworks this afternoon, each one by a woman artist. I'll be asking you some questions to stimulate some close looking and discussion. And so to start the close looking, I would ask you to take a look at this first artwork. It's a photograph. It's untitled. And it's by a photographer artist, Carrie Mae Weems. So just take a look at it for about 10 seconds or so. And hopefully you had more time on your own prior to this session to really study it slowly. But I'll ask Christy to, um, or, or you all, um, if you'd like to share in the conversation to unmute your mic. And I can't see everyone all at one time, so I would encourage you, rather than raise a hand, to just jump on in and we'll see. If it's not total chaos, we'll figure out how to control the conversation. But uh, what's going on in this photograph? What's happening? So, uh, yeah, I'll say, I'll say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very ambiguous, and I guess it depends on whatever mood I might be in, uh, might uh, have an effect upon what I think is going on. I don't, I mean, they're playing cards, and uh, Malcolm X's photograph is in the background. It's, um, Okay, so, so Morty um, is saying that first that, that it's very ambiguous, it's kind of hard to tell, and he observed that it appears that the uh, characters are playing cards, and Alice also um, noticed that women uh, playing cards, drinking, and smoking. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's not me, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so, um, Morty, when you said ambiguous, what is it that you see that makes you um, say that it's ambiguous? Well, um, uh, the, the, the woman who's holding the cigarette uh, at first looks, looks like she's either bored or sad or... I'm not sure, not necessarily irritated or angry. Whereas, uh, and my first thought would be that that's her son uh, on the right. And uh, he's, his emotion is uh, totally unrelated to, is not responding to whatever she is. He looks like he's ready to play cards and she's look like looking as if she's there and would might rather be somewhere else. And of course you see the glasses, uh, and it looks like a bottle of whiskey. Okay, so there was a lot in that comment, Morty. Thanks. So um, I'm going to let's let's first focus on the expression since that was what you started with. And and you said that um, that she looks bored or sad. Um, any others that might have um, some other ideas about the the woman's um, expression or how she's feeling? I, I, think, I think she's well, kind of whoops. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. I was going to say that she. Uh, I, I stared at it a long time before we got online. And she could also very much be saying, just give me a minute to think about what move I'm going to make. I gotta, I gotta quiet and think about which card to play. Okay, so, so from your perspective then, you're, you're seeing her as still focused on, on that card game. And there was someone else who was trying to jump in. Me, can Darlene. you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Darlene? Darlene? Yes. Yeah, Darlene. So, my thought was that suddenly the conversation shifted from the card game because the cards are no longer in her hand. Uh, and Randy in, his, in the chat noticed uh, that she's put down her hand also. And that her and hand is up to her face kind of says to me, there's a difficult conversation that perhaps has begun between the two of them or that she's getting ready to have with whoever that is at the table. I, my first thought also was that it was her son. It might be her son. Okay, so a couple of comments that, um, that the other character may be the woman's son. Um, I'm not sure if you all can see the chat, so I'll just kind of um, pull some that 
relate to what the conversation that we were just having. Uh, Barbara thinks that she looks upset. Um, she also thinks the young man looks challenging. And Alice thinks maybe she just got bad news. And um, another Barbara, Barbara Heller, um, says that, that it looks like an argument. So for those who think um, that the young man looks challenging and that um, it looks like an argument, what is it that you see that um, in, in, their, um, in their either posture or expression that makes you think that? So he looks very, he has a very assertive upright spine. Uh -huh. She's leaning back in the chair. She's got her hand covering her eyes. Um, he's, he's more dominant compositionally. And, um, but there's also the presence of liquor on the table and her glass has a little bit in the bottom. His looks maybe a little emptier. Okay, so there's another comment there then about uh, what, what the objects are on the table and particularly uh, the liquor and um, that, that one glass has something in it, one, one looks empty. Um, Lisa says that she might just be having a conversation about a bad card hand. Um, she also, Lisa also points out that it might be a metaphor for being black in America. Can you say a little more about that, Lisa? May I speak up? Sure. Uh, I'm, hi, this is Lisa. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at her and it's almost as if there's some uh, just sadness around a, a resignation of um, not just having, a, being dealt a bad hand. Ah, so are you saying that it's sort of the metaphor for being dealt a bad hand, not just in cards, but in life? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes, no, I can not. hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I was kind of thinking with um, uh, the Malcolm X over there, kind of, you know, hope for a better future, or, you know, at least trying to activate for a better future all those years ago, um, that here she is, a single mother, um, frustrated, hoping that she could provide more for her child and yet being in a you know similar situation to what women were in all those years ago and not having broken free and and finding a better life for herself and her son Okay, so you're you're kind of looking at this as not only um, uh, being being uh, being black and and the, the racial issue, but as well issues of um, uh, women and the, yes. the role of women. Um, I I see that Carol um, Carol B maybe yes. um, has something to say. Yes, I I uh, for some reason don't see the woman as the mother. I see her. I see them both as contemporaries having a um, a drink at his place after dinner and playing cards and they're having a conversation and um, I think they're both involved I think it's his place because of the artwork and I think he they're both middle class working people um, educated she seems to have gotten dressed up for the evening with her braids up nice jewelry low-cut black dress and that makes me feel they're they're on more on a date and they may be both working in the activist um, movement and he may have asked her a serious question that she is really pondering and um, he is an aggressor but he's a gentle aggressor he's asking her more intellectual questions that is really she needs to really think about Wow, that, that's a, a lot wrapped up in that comment um, and, and a little bit different point, some similar points of view to what we've been hearing, um, but also uh, different in terms of the relationship and, and the space. Thank you. Um, Evie uh, points out that um, there's another item in the room that um, it, she feels is symbolic and that's the overhead light that feels like an interrogation type of light. Um, would Evie or anyone else like to say a little bit more about that? Well, I'll, I'll continue because I was the one that wrote that message. So okay. 
I think, you know, at this particular time in the South, I mean, this looks like a dated photo unless it was, you know, all set up. But um, I think that the, I'm not, I mean, I'm not biracial or anything, but I think that time in America's history was fraught with violence and danger to people that advocated freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, legally, socially, politically, um, I, my sense is that people that fought in that <clears throat> movement experienced a great deal of discrimination, risk, danger, and probably unfairly incarcerated. Okay, so looking at, you know, is that um, because of what you're seeing uh, with the Malcolm X poster or, um, you know, in terms yeah, of trying to date yeah. it and, and yeah. the, the civil rights movement, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. this, this and, and this photograph just, um, it just to, to, for your information was taken in, it, the photograph was actually taken in 1990, but, um, I don't know that that would change uh, your interpretation of that at all. Um, oh, Barbara Pressman, did you? Um, well, I'm getting I, kind of clued in that some people have some things to say. Barbara. Well, I raised my hand because I didn't want to have to jump in. But I, I still am you know, thinking that he looks like he's challenging or giving her some difficult news. I still feel like it's a mother son. And I think, I don't know if it's because you said it was 1990, but I think even it's timeless. I think he's giving her some disappointing news, like uh, I'm joining the army, I'm not going to go to college, or something like that. And she's kind of um, really looking disappointed. Yeah. So, Barbara, is there um, is there something about the male character that um, uh, can you say a little bit more about what it is about him that makes you makes you say that? Well, his the way his hand is gesturing, it's like he's in the midst of a gesture in the way he's speaking. And while her her facial features are sad or uh, pensive, he looks almost like you can see a little bit of a smile in his face. So. Um, that's why I feel like he's challenging her. Maybe he's not giving her, but he's challenging her um, with that expression. Mm -hmm. And um, thanks, yeah. Barbara. And uh, there was someone else, Lynn. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to add something. Uh, one is, I mean, the, am, the ambiguity is marvelous. I, I mean, I think it's staged. I mean, it's a staged photograph, maybe, but everybody is really bringing into it uh, our own experiences and uh, biases. One, one of the one one of us thought, you know, there that one of us thought immediately um, single mother. Why um, in the South? Why not Milwaukee? Uh, they're having, to me, I mean, all of the props, the Johnny Walker bottle, the bowl of peanuts, uh, the card game, uh, the camel cigarettes, uh, they're having uh, an evening of playing cards. And I, I and he, he seems, he looks quite handsome to me. And I, <laughs> I see him leaning forward with kind of eagerness rather than aggression, but that's, you know, I don't see anything aggressive in this young black male. I see kind of an eagerness. I still think she's thinking over her next play, but the, but the photographer has called it playing cards with Malcolm and that light. Yeah. I hadn't thought of it as, but it is the stereotypical uh, interrogation room lamp, which is, I hadn't thought of, so I'll be thinking about that. But it's, you know, when you start with just what is it that you see, not what do you think it means, just what do you see? Um, we have a nice evening of cards with some Johnny Walker and peanuts. 
Thank you. Um, that that's kind of an interesting perspective that we've you know, we've had a lot of different interpretations of what's going on based on what people see. But from what you've said, it's we're bringing we're bringing our own perspectives into in, into this interpretation as well. And you also talked about some of the the items on the table, and I'd like to um, have you take a have you all take a, a look at those. Um, and um, is, is there anything, you know, why do you think the, um, the artist chose to include those? Because in fact, this is a, a staged uh, photograph. So why, why, looking at those items, do, do you think there's any, um, any symbolism there at all? Or why might she have chosen those? Uh, Doreen here, I'd like to uh, comment on that. I, uh, Thank you to whoever. Thank you, Mary. That was really, uh, I appreciated those comments. And uh, I'd like the um, thank you to the person who brought about the uh, comment about the overhead light. To me, I would put the comment um, bare on all the items. The, none of those photographs or posters have frames. Uh, the light is, yes, as if being interrogated or a focus on those. Uh, essentials and it's not just the peanuts are not just in the bowl they're also some of them are broken open on the table and camels are from way back <laughs> in the uh, cigarette world I don't know a lot about the alcohol world but the cigarette <clears throat> part I remember having aunts and uncles that uh, smoked that so it to me it takes it 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 sort of draws a very basic uh, line of exposure if you will like exposure to the emotions that are going on or the the social comments that are being made. Thanks, thanks. So kind of that light having an important um, role as, as well in in the whole composition of the photograph. And there's some conversation about uh, working, uh, what, what is it that's um, located um, down by the male character's glass and there's some speculation about that. It is kind of hard to see in this photograph and and Christy um, thinks that um, once we get to see this in person it might be a little clearer. There's a speculation that it might be peanut shells um, or it might be a cigarette lighter. So um, and and Lisa points out about the significance um, which she's interpreting as the significance of the shells and she's saying um, peanut shells and maybe um, a connection to uh, George Washington Carver. Any other thoughts about um, why, why some of these other items were included on the table? Uh, yeah, I have a comment. Yeah, Morty. Um, well, I think one thing that's, a couple of things that are significant, there's, uh, there's a, barren, uh, Im a barren quality to the image. Obviously, uh, they are, don't have much money. They don't, like, Someone alluded to there's uh, not there are only photographs on the wall. There's no painting. There's no artwork, and um, it's interesting that they're playing cards, but there's no chips. There's no money on the table. Um, usually, if people are going to be playing cards and you're opening up peanuts, there'd be an extra little dish to put the peanut shells on when you're finished eating the peanuts. Um, and uh, I think her upset is unrelated to the card game. Um, I could see if there were if there was a lot of money on the table and a lot of chips on the table and maybe it's related to the card game but I think the card game has nothing to do with the way she feels and maybe it was the day that uh, Malcolm X was assassinated you know who knows um, so I think they're uh, they don't have many assets as far as the light it's about as inexpensive lamp as you could ever find and um, so I think they're money-wise, they are poor, and um, she's more upset perhaps than him because he's a young guy and uh, he maybe hasn't experienced the prejudice that maybe she has experienced in her lifetime. Yeah, thanks, Morty. I think you know it's interesting, um, you know that. Uh, you you interpret the um, the setting as indicating that maybe people uh, these these particular characters aren't aren't um, people of of privilege or, or wealth and 
um, that someone else earlier had said that uh, the setting looks like it's got to be the guy's house. Um, so, you know, I think going back to just sort of to, to, to bring this to, together, um, going back to one of the original comments was that this looks ambiguous. And I think given all of the various interpretations that, um, that we've come up with in terms of what is happening, who these people are and what they're doing, I think really kind of pulls back to that sort of ambiguity of, of this particular photograph. And it does generate a lot of discussion. I just have one question to ask you to, to wrap up. And that is just because we are looking at, at uh, artwork by women today, is is there anything, um, if anything, in this photograph that might indicate to you that it's the, a female perspective, that it was that it was done by a female photographer? Well, I would think first of all that it's a single mom. Yeah. Uh, there's no father in the picture. There are no friends. Um, my, you know, maybe she had a long day of work and comes home to uh, this is the best she can offer to her kid. Okay, so um, so one one uh, Morty's idea of this maybe being from a female perspective is he's looking at that female character being um, sort of the, the focus on that character. Any um, any other um, comments about? Boris, can you hear me? Oh, I think the before what before we go to another picture, I am curious to know if you have any information about what the photographer might have commented on about her about the photograph she took my understanding is it, it's a posed photograph so I, I guess i'd love to know what the photographer's intent was okay so it is as i say it is a staged photograph the artist is actually the woman in the photograph and in terms of the interpretation it's part of a series of photographs um, called the Kitchen Table Series. And Morty, I know you know the answer to this. If you wanted to find out what the artist's comments were, what would you, where, where would, what would you do? I, I Google the artist. And Absolutely. The yeah. <laughs> and there, there's, um, because she is a, a living and working artist, there are a lot of YouTube, um, uh, YouTube videos of her actually talking about her work. So yeah. I would encourage you to, um, uh, look it up, um, and I really appreciate the discussion on this. And as Christy said, probably about five minutes ago to me in a private chat, yikes, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's uh, time to move on. So, um, Christy, can we get to the about a female artist perspective? So, if, if we don't know what the story is, we don't know who that woman is, what her role is, and we've been imagining what we think she's about. But if you simply study the gestural language of the three figures that we can see in the picture. So we have this younger guy who's in a very assertive and larger posture. We have the woman who's leaning back. Um, she's covering her eyes. Um, she's got her hand on the table. It's, it's almost a, a, a kind of defeat. And then behind her, this very assertive pointing finger of Malcolm X. And she's, she, I mean, we could even say maybe she's kind of caught between those two dynamic forces. And I think as a woman, like a lot of women can relate to that experience of being dominated by men. Okay, so interesting interpretation. So looking at the looking at the woman and the kind of being um, uh, positioned between Malcolm X with his finger and the the gestures of the uh, the male figure that uh, it might represent how she's feeling in terms of the role of women or her perspective on this. And um, so, I am going to conclude the discussion of this one. I think it's really been um, a really animated discussion and I'm still seeing group chats coming up about people agreeing or disagreeing and disagreeing with interpretation. So I think this is what slow art's all about. When you really stop and take a look and really read um, an artwork, there's a lot more into it and I think a lot more questions that come out of it too. So Christy, do you think it's time to move on to the next one? All right, this one also is untitled. It's by an author, uh, an artist, Minnie Evans, and it is a, a pencil, colored pencil drawing. So take um, about 10 seconds, take a look at this one.
Okay. So what's going on here? What's going on well, in this drawing? To me, this is the essence of being a woman. It's ah. uh, uh, you have different faces presented in the wings. I see it as a butterfly, you know, with the center, the body of the butterfly actually being the woman who is kind of concealed behind these faces in the beautiful colored wings that she puts out to the world. Um, the vividness, I believe, of the colors, you know, indicates um, a lot of the, the ideas and the realities that she attempts to share but never completely is able to reveal. Um, and, and she's a beautiful thing, like a butterfly in my opinion. Okay, so I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing first femininity. Um, I'm hearing beauty um, from the colors yeah. and the figures and, and butterfly. What else do we see? I see it as a fertility, um, honoring fertility. And um, with the fertility coming in, the center to a young woman and even the mother and the mother-in-law could be in the background and it seems to be like a Persian artist or some uh, Mideast with the almond shaped eyes which are dominant and very feminine and the scrolls representing life and uh, movement and passion and um, I just, at the colors, the outside, I feel it's sort of uh, a natural group of people, the outside coolness with the inside um, passion. Okay, again, I'm hearing more femininity. I'm seeing from the chat room um, uh, comments about femininity, um, vulva, chakras, uh, a couple of comments that it looks like the colors look like Georgia O'Keeffe, um, but you mentioned that uh, you saw the the middle figure as a young woman, and the uh, the two uh, figures above being um, more maybe the the elders. Is there anything that um, that you're seeing that leads you to to uh, say that? Mainly because it's sort of the um it's sort of maybe the um, fertility of a young woman about to have her wedding night. And um, this is a, a, a drawing to honor that with the colors of the passion and the movement uh, going up and through, coming through like the vulva. And, oh, and yeah. Okay, thank you. And again, a, a lot of emphasis um, on color as, as kind of leading people to these interpretations. What else? Just a comment on the style. So it's relatively flat and highly stylized. Yes, very, very and, flat. Yep. And uh, the artist has managed to pretty much put in every color in the color spectrum. Lots of color, almost using every color in the spectrum. I think you're right. I'm seeing them all. Yeah. How would this be different? How would the effect of this be different um, if the artist just used graphite pencil and didn't use color at all? Would it still have the same impact for you? Not it, it wouldn't for me, that's for sure, because I, I think the colors kind of evoke passion. The one thing I'd be interested in hearing is what you think about the, the perfect symmetry of it. You know, you pretty much equal sides. The two faces have slightly different expressions, the ones at the top, but, but that symmetry really intrigues me. Mary Alm uh, had also commented on this, the sort of perfect symmetry, like a mirror image on either side um, mm -hmm. of the drawing. And what does that do for you, the symmetry? What, what, um, how does that make, does it impact how you, you feel when you look at this, your mood when you look at it? I think what Mary was trying to say, and Mary, please feel free to jump in. I don't want to misinterpret your comment but it made it feel like a school art project to you, like something that we would have done 
um, in school where you fold a piece of paper in half and sort of draw the same thing on either side. So I'm wondering, Mary, does that make you feel like it's more, uh, I don't know the right word to say, but um, that it's more naive maybe in its execution because of its perfect symmetry? Well, I actually, I actually did that school project at some point. So that's, you know, I kind of recognize that, um, that, that, that teacher, teachers teach this technique. Um, I mean, I know, I know the artist is a naive, so, but I like the, I like the colors. I see the butterfly Oops, I'm, I'm, I'm using my cursor to point out the butterfly piece. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to point with my finger yeah. because I'm so used to doing that with the artwork. It's kind of hard not to do it. Christy can point for us, though. Yeah. But, so, um, I don't, yeah, I, um, I don't think it detracts uh, from it because the faces are different faces. Yeah, it's symmetrical, yet if you look at the detail, it is slightly different on, on both sides of, of the center. Um, Alice commented that the two women at the top for her could represent two minds. Anything else you'd like to say about that, Alice? Uh, Lynn says the symmetry, the symmetry evokes a sense of protection from the other woman around her, other women around her. Doris, to me, yes. the whole, to me the whole thing looks like a metamorphosis. We talked about it at the beginning, a coming of age, but it's like, it could be two people in her life, could be a mother-in-law and a mother, or a mother and a grandmother, and it's a young girl, you know, meta changing into a woman. I think that coming, uh, the metamorphosis and the coming of age, is the feeling that I get from the overall image. Yeah, so a couple of you have remarked that it does look like a young woman perhaps coming of age. Also, um, the idea of the butterfly uh, coming out of a cocoon maybe, which also would be um, metamorphosis as some of you have talked about. Um, what about the other shapes that aren't faces and butterflies? Um, do they remind you of anything? Lots of spirals, Darlene says, uh, mm -hmm. represent the journey and change of life. There we go, Metaphor metamorphosis again, as it unfolds, um, the spirals are, are sacred, reiterates the chakra ideas. A couple of you mentioned chakra. You know, one you thing we talked about is the paper on which this is um, executed. Yes. And it's an interesting tone that sort of matches the tone of the faces that we see, but the paper itself looks sort of torn and folded and, you know, like maybe it had been stored away and, and she pulled it out for some reason, or maybe this is what she had to make her marks on. If she's a naive artist, I don't know anything about her. Um, but I think that's also a telling feature of the piece. So, so the paper looks like it, it's, it, it's old. You can see some tears along the edges. Um, it's brown. So it's a different material from what you would typically expect an artist to create an artwork on. Um, someone asked if it's crayon. It's colored pencil. Um, and uh, someone else commented also that it's primitive. So we've heard naive, primitive. Uh, someone wants to know where the artist is from. Um, Minnie Evans is actually, or was, um, actually from uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, Mary, Mary suggests it could be grocery bag paper. It does, in fact, look like that. Uh, Doris? Yes. You asked about some of the um, symbolism of the shapes. Yes, the other shapes, what they might remind have, you of. I have two. Um, mm -hmm. One is on top of the two women at the top. They're like crowns. Yes. Uh, the green. Yes. Uh, then down at the bottom, as um, coming up, the, the two green leaves that sort of, to me, represent um, the ovaries with seeds in the pocket of it. It's like her hands almost. Okay, so again, we're, we're looking at that shapes that might be sort of nature shapes, mm -hmm. and in particular, reminding many of you of um, actual physical parts of the woman's body. 
this drawing um, doesn't have a title. Any any ideas if you were going to title this, what you would call it? Oh. <laughs> Fertility. Yeah. Fertility. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. That's what I think. I agree. I have a, a kind of an unrelated question and an unrelated comment. Um, number one is uh, the the one in the center. I, I find not particularly attractive. Her teeth are tiny. I wonder if there's any thought behind that. And the other thing is the nostrils are uh, not at the same level and they're unequal, which is, is that just because uh, she didn't care or is, was there a purpose on that? And then my other question is, I, I wonder how this artist might have uh, done uh, an image if it were men, if the topic were males instead of females. And how, what do you think? Oh. How, how, do you have any ideas of how it would be done? Because that does kind of get us into, I, I'm, I'm sort of um, drawing a conclusion from all of the comments that we've heard so far that, that this definitely would be from a woman's perspective because I've heard all feminine references. But Morty, how would a being a male? How would a, a, a man? What would a man have done with a similar? Well, I don't know. I, I guess I I don't find the the women particularly attractive uh, with the tiny teeth. Uh, I mean, men and women have larger teeth than that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the the two women up top. Uh, again, they're asymmetrical. They look different. They're one, the one on the left uh, looks kind of smart, uh, has a, a, a somewhat of a smile, a pleasant look, uh, and her eyes are different colors. Uh, the one on the right seems, uh, I'm not sure what she's thinking. I don't know if the artist had in her mind the specif specificity about, specificity about the what the women looked like or what their attitudes were. Whether they were happy or sad or irritated. I, I okay, guess. Okay, so, so Morty, what I'm hearing is that um, a couple of things. First, that the, um, the, the, the drawings of the faces are not particularly realistic um, and that you don't necessarily see the, the, the women uh, themselves in terms of their facial features as, as being examples of female beauty per se. Um, yeah. and, um, and that it's hard to read uh, their expressions. Is that, I capture that correctly? I think so. <laughs> okay. Any other, um, any other thoughts on... Um, the other thing is maybe, maybe the artist was better as a graphic designer than uh, someone for painting faces. Okay, so again, it kind of goes back to a couple of people who had said that this was looks sort of primitive, looks like maybe the artist was untrained. Um, and um, just to, um, so, so just to kind of wrap this up, again, I'm really hearing um, of the theme of, 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 of female, of change, um, of the female, um, female body, um, of, um, uh, of, of nature, um, as well as speculation about the artist. And so I can tell you just a tiny bit about the artist before we move on. Um, and um, the, um, the, the drawing of, by Minnie Evans doesn't have a title. Minnie Evans is in fact an untrained artist. She gets her inspiration, I understand, from her dreams. And um, so she also um, worked her, at um, she worked at Airly Gardens in Wilmington, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a garden that's in conjunction with a mansion in Wilmington. And so, um, how do you think, given that background of gardens, that that might have working at gardens for most of her career, how that might have um, influenced her art? Well, the leaves and the butterflies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of the, the nature that she saw and appreciated in her work there, I think, comes out in this drawing. And just in terms of interpretation, because again, I think we focused on a few things. 
um, in terms of how we've interpreted it today. But I can give you a quote from the artist and she's talking about her, her drawings. She says, when I get through with them, I have to look at them like everybody else. They're just as strange to me as they are to anybody else. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's, that's it's kind of interesting and, um, and reflective of her personality and her art. <laughs> So, um, unless, Christy, you have anything to say to wrap up on this one, we'll move to the next one. All right, this is The Little Red Bush by Harriet Randall Loomis, another woman artist. It was done in 1915, and it's an oil painting. We'll take a few seconds to look at this. All right, so when, um, when Christy put out the information on the invitation to join today, um, we asked you to spend 15 minutes looking at each of the artwork. So hopefully you spent something close to 15 minutes looking at this before our session today. Um, just wonder how that experience was for you. Was it easy or difficult to really look at an artwork like this at a landscape for 15 minutes? I loved it because um, it, and then I loved the questions because it got me deeper into the piece. Mm -hmm. So say a little more, what, what, any particular thoughts that you have about what's happening in this landscape? And this one, I feel mm -hmm. it's um, late fall because of the snow up on the mountains and, um, and things down below are changing a little bit more slowly. And this little red, bush is on fire and symbolically it could be the child between the two grown-ups bet between the other two trees and he's flaring up either doesn't want winter to come or symbolic of he's just been told something that he has to do and he doesn't want to do it all right so interesting interpretation so first um you're saying that it that it is that it's fall you see you notice there um is some i guess the white that you're seeing in the background on the mountains you're interpreting as as some snow um looking at the changing colors um below the mountains as representative of the fall and the little bush between the two trees is is sort of parent and child child and parent what else can we find or what other ideas do you have? Small but mighty, the little red tree, Lisa says. I, this was a I, more, I, um, more is it, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, I saw it more as a woman among men rather than a child among between parents um, in that, you know, it's, it's autumn, that's the time, the harvest for all of our works and so on. And despite the fact that there are the bigger and, you know, metaphorically speaking, louder presences, this one, you know, this has this intense beauty that it's contributed to the scene. And then if you look in the foreground into the water, the, um, the orange of the bush or the red of the bush is much more dominant than it is in the actual landscape. And, and I feel like, I felt anyway, it's kind of, you know what what women often do with their nurturing that they bring life forward um and and it in time becomes more powerful than the louder and the larger that was my thing so looking at this um this small bush in in terms of the which kind of brings us to the female perspective the artist being a female and perhaps from what you're saying that the smaller bush represents the women and the larger trees the more dominant um male um and the um the the nurturing that you see in kind of the reflection that, that that's more intense than the other in color than the other reflections um mary mary said that she um didn't know wouldn't have known that it was painted painted by a woman um Barbara says um, she's really focusing more on the beauty of the landscape and the, the outside, that it, it might have been painted out, outdoors in plain air. 
I kind of agree with Barbara. To me, just as uh, someone loving nature and looking at all the details, the sky, the mountains, the trees, and the change, I think she's just, um, she loves anything. She loves Mother Nature. It's, it's um, not um, outstandingly feminine. It, it's just a, beaut a picture of a beauty of nature. Okay, thank you. So another comment on just the beauty of this painting and showing how the, the beauty of nature. Um, Christy says that Darlene had her hand raised. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I wanted to comment on your question, Doris, about what the exercise of looking at this beforehand was. Yes, thank you. For me, I, because I'm a photographer, uh, more by nature, uh, this piece of artwork might not have called me over to it if I were standing in the museum. So I really appreciated the opportunity to go uh, deeper and to look for more detail that I might not instantly be drawn to. There's a clarity in the water on one side and it's fuzzy on the other. There's a, there's a bird in the tree. There's uh, the colors. There's a whole psychology to the colors. I think someone chatted uh, something about the um, uh, definition of the of the colors. So uh, it it I really appreciate that it gave me time to do all that or drew that out of me in a way that it wouldn't normally. So I really appreciate that. So coming in and and really spending time looking at a looking at an artwork rather than just maybe doing a quick glimpse and moving on to something else was was valuable in terms of getting a little bit more meaning um, and a, a feeling of emotion from a particular artwork. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa says that she's looking at the red and it reminds her of sexuality. Uh, how, how would looking, this is an oil painting, so this is why I'm asking this question. Um, how does looking at this painting in, in the slide on your um, computer screen, how would it be different from looking at this in um, actually at the museum, looking at the original piece of art? It has no texture. I mean, that's, what, that's the frustrating yeah. thing to me. It, there's, it's impossible to um, get all of the energy that might be here through the thickness of the oil and, yeah. and also it's hard to to see brush strokes yes it's, yes yeah so and so when you're when you're looking at a, a painting um a, a in 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 person um you're um you do get a sense of the texture of the paint um, and you can see brush strokes, which is kind of related to that as well. So you're going to get a different look and a different feel, perhaps from that uh, from that painting, looking at it um, realistically. Any uh, other thoughts about what it might be like to look at this in person and what you might gain from it? Doris, can I just ask the group a question? Sure. It, it might be possible if things are on view in the galleries for me to sneak in the galleries and just take a picture of them on the wall with maybe a person for reference for scale. If, if we, um, uh, in future sort of discussions like that, if I am able to do that, would you all like for me to incorporate an image like that in the slides? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I I had talked to Doris ahead of time about how frustrated I was with this particular image that I felt like it didn't beautifully capture the original artwork. It it seems very fuzzy to me. And as Doris knows, she picks this because it's an absolutely gorgeous painting. So, Yeah. I did enjoy, though, hearing people's bringing the interpretation beyond it just being a beautiful painting. Um, things that I wouldn't have thought of. So I, I really do um, appreciate it. And again, more comments about the bush. It's the most dense of the three trees. It's the most hardy looking. So uh, that in addition to the color kind of brings you um, into, into that painting. I chose to end with a, a landscape um, thinking about the situation that we're all in right now where uh, we're all kind of housebound and um, I was wondering um, 
if uh, for any of you, um, how spending time with a landscape like this one, um, do you find that it uh, helps distract you from the stresses that you might be going, um, being under now, being so isolated? Anyone have any reaction to that? I, I would say um, no, because it's right outside my window. And, uh -huh. and I can also step outside my door. Yeah. So I, I, I really don't need to have a look at a beautiful landscape to, to feel freed because I'm not, I'm not imprisoned. Yeah, so, so, um, so as beautiful as this painting is, being out in nature, seeing the real thing could be even better, for sure. It did actually take uh, me out um, for a moment. I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to be sitting there, uh, maybe on a little dock on the other side of that body of water, uh, just to take in that view and breathe it in. I actually caught myself being there viscerally. That, um, so yes, I, I too am quite capable of walking outside. I live in Florida, so the sun is shining, the sky is blue, it's a gorgeous day, and um, I still appreciated this point of view um, uh, as well. And I normally don't get drawn into a painting uh, that way. Subject matter, yes, but to actually put myself in there, uh, that, was, uh, that, that doesn't happen very often for me. Yeah, for me, it transported me to autumn, which is my very favorite season and brought me to some wonderful times that, you know, I've shared with other people in autumn. You know, it is beautiful now, but it's spring. So it, it, it just kind of took me away from now and also took me a few months from now when hopefully we will be able to encounter nature face to face. Yeah, thank you. And um, another, another point that I had was just looking at it, loving nature and being able to go outside and I'm admiring and appreciating the artist's talent of getting all of that into this beautiful painting, the reflection, the sky, the mountains. So it's an appreciation of their representation of nation, nature. Thank you. And yeah, also, a lot of people talking about uh, nature, like liking it. Um, it's less of a narrative, uh, so we can all kind of look at, look at it for its beauty. Uh, someone was asking where it is, and I really don't know. Um, it. it uh, I'm not sure. Christy, do you know that there's nothing in the uh, painting uh, information that would indicate that? She thinks it's New York. I think that it's New York, Doris. I can yeah. uh, find out more for everyone. If you're interested, yeah. just let me know. But I think that I remember Pam saying that it showed a scene from New York. Yeah, and she would know. <laughs> um, so we've looked at three very different artworks, very different media, um, all created by women. And um, we all had an opportunity to share uh, reactions and interpretations which were quite different um, among the group. So that always makes it interesting for me just to hear everyone's different point of view. And I appreciate all of you for participating. I just have um, uh, just more of a, um, a housekeeping, I guess, closing question, um, because this was my first opportunity to do a tour via Zoom. And so I was wondering um, if um, you found it of benefit. Did the, did the Zoom tour experience work for you? And would you participate again if we um, featured different artworks? I have a question about no. about the about the, uh, the the way we do it. I'm not sure whether you're supposed to raise your hand visually or just uh, start talking if you have a, a verbal question. We actually were going back and forth on how to do that, and so this was our first um, you know dry run, I guess. So at least it was mine, and uh, we thought we, the reason for keeping the group um, small, relatively small, was so that we thought we would try just letting people jump in and talk like they would on a regular tour without hand raising. So that's part of the I guess question for you: Did um, uh, did did that seem to work for you? Or would you think, is there is a hand raising function I, that you yes, could I, click on? I saw in the instructions in general for, uh, for Zoom, 
that you're supposed to raise your hand. So I raised my hand several times, but um, was not recognized. And then I would sometimes just chime in. So I didn't yeah. know what the right way to do it is. So, so yeah. whatever, I'm not sure one way is better than the other, but at least I think we should agree on what the standard way of doing it is. So Morty, if you, you ha should have some meeting controls either at the top or the bottom of your screen. One of the buttons you can push is participants. And when you get to the box that lists all of the participants, there's an option that says raise hand. Um, well, so what that does is that allows me uh, to see that you have a question and I can point out to Doris oh, so um, either when she pauses or um, when she asks for questions that you so have it's better to, to clip on participants as opposed to clipping on clicking on chat or raising your hand you can actually have both of those boxes open at the same time to be able to watch the chat and raise your hand. Yeah, I am able to see the chat because Christy is hosting it and she actually has her slides up. Um, I can only see the chat. I can't see the raised hands um, from okay, my screen, is, but Christy was, was letting me know via chat that there were people who wanted to talk. So, um, you know, we're just, we, again, I appreciate that, that comment because maybe we could be a little clearer when we talk Christy next time uh, with a new group about how to participate. Got it. Carol Thank B. You. has her hand raised, Doris. Carol, I'm calling on you. <laughs> I did not know about the hand raise, so thank you, Christy. Absolutely, um, and now I'm going to lower your hand for you. Okay, oh. thank you. So I do not have a visual of Doris, who is leading the discussion. I only have a visual of six people, and I understand some people don't want to have a visual, but it would be nice to have Doris's because she's leading the conversation. Uh, so that was Doris's choice today, yeah. um, whether or not to turn on her. Um, oh, okay. And if that everyone... would be, you should have my photo on, on, on your list. And if that would be, I really didn't have a strong preference. And since Christy had just a, a photo, I said that was fine. I actually put on real clothes because I said, gee, I thought I was going to be on video. And if I'd known that, I you know, would have stayed in my pajamas. But um, uh, I am fine with doing the video next time. So I appreciate that comment. I wanted not to be distracting um, from the art. And I didn't realize how much of the, um, the photo, the, the people's photos and videos we'd actually be able to see over the slide so you know again this was new for me but i can see uh some of you and if i scroll i can you know see all of you those of you who have your your pictures up so i'll be happy to do um video again next time christy carol i think that that's a really great question um and thank you for asking it just so that you know when we have um these virtual programs like that um we, we are letting the presenter choose whether or not to have um, their sort of home environment behind them since most of the staff is working at home and the docents are all at home um, just as a privacy privacy concern. Christy, well, if you want to put my video on, I can wave to everyone. Okay, hold well, uh, Actually, I can, I? yes. So I just sent you a message to start your video. So Doris, it was still very effective. Just there she is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Doris. I don't can't, see Doris. You I might need to scroll to see me. I can't see me either, actually. I see you. I see Barbara. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing. A, okay, if you scroll down, you can see. Oh, I don't know how to do that. There's just a That's little, a, if you put a, your cursor or if you have a touch screen, your finger over the top oh, or bottom it. of the, um, the people, and you can just click on the arrow and it scrolls you. So Mary just uh, said in the there chat box that she would enjoy seeing me too. And I, I love seeing you, Mary, and seeing everyone too. Um, my concern isn't necessarily about privacy, but I am actually sitting at my computer um, at the museum. Um, there are six of us that are essential staff that keep the collection and the building safe and, and running while we're closed to the public. Um, and my computer does not have a webcam. <laughs> so oh. showing my profile picture is the best that I can do in this situation. But so you. for those of you who are museum members, you know that we're very judicious about the budget. So we, we don't have a webcam on a fancy computer for Christy. That's correct. <laughs> but if anyone would like to donate to get her one, I'm sure the museum would appreciate that. Um, Jay has uh, their hand up. 
Jay. Yes, I'm sitting here in a hospital wearing a hospital gown, but oh. I want to tell you how much I appreciate this. This is oh. absolutely fantastic. Oh, and I'm, I'm so happy you were able to join us. I'm also very disappointed that I could not turn on my video. Did were you able to see this the 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 pictures the slides um, or you just can't see the pictures of the participants? I could see both, but okay, no one could see me. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Right, yeah. I had asked for a paisley gown, but they wouldn't give it. To uh. me. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, and Jay. I hope you recover from your <laughs> illness. I'm sorry to hear that you're in the hospital, but so excited that you were able to join us. So everybody, I am going to be sending um, a program evaluation for those of you who have ever participated in a program at the museum. You know that I always follow up with a program evaluation immediately. Um, if you do have other questions um, about um, Zoom, let me know. I can send you in the right, uh, point you in the right direction to watch some tutorial videos on how it works. We do plan on having more opportunities like this in the near future. I'm getting together virtually with um, some of our docents next week and hopefully we'll be able to offer an opportunity like this uh, once a week, uh, perhaps starting next week, but more likely starting the week after. So I'll keep you all posted. Um, and we'll send out information in our um, e-newsletter every Thursday. If you're not already on that list, um, please get on that list or send me an email and ask me to add you to it. I'd be more than happy to do so. Um, we also have um, information about our virtual events on our website, um, as well as other types of opportunities. Uh, we are, like most museums, participating in the Museum from Home initiative. So if you go on to our website at AshevilleArt.org, uh, right there on the home page, you'll see um, a banner that says Museum from Home. Click through there to see virtual events. Uh, art activities, our blog, and other information that you can um, take part in while you're at home. So we do thank everyone so much for participating with us today. I think that considering this was our first virtual conversation, it went pretty well. Um, so thank you all for uh, participating and for giving us feedback live, um, as well as in the program evaluation that I'll be sending you today. As always, thank you to our wonderful, wonderful master docent, Doris Potash. Thank you. <laughs> and thank and you, Christy, for setting this up. I know it takes a lot, took a lot of a lot of work and technology knowledge. So I <laughs> appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you all so much, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.